Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I always like to kick things off with something interesting. And who here has a fake profile on Facebook to spy on what their ex is doing? Okay, For whatever reason that you have multiple Facebook accounts, maybe you want to separate your work friends from your real friends in your private life. And switching between them has always been a hassle because you have to log in, get into another account, and then you got to type in another password. Those days are over. Yes, much like Google, Facebook will now let you flip between your different accounts. You can have up to four different accounts attached to one Facebook profile. And then once they're all set up, you just tap your profile picture and then you're able to seamlessly switch. In other news, Facebook is about to release their own artificial intelligence driven email application. I don't even heard about this. Emails will be automatically flagged as mark as read. Oh, that was a good one. That was get it like Mark Zuckerberg red privacy you don't have any all right if you had to explain it it wasn't that good after all Mm, you're probably right hey listen you're about ready to get more tech smarts because every single thing is now a tech thing i am of course kim commando your digital goddess here it's the biggest show it's the best show it's the most trusted show it's an award-winning show about all things digital and if you're first time tuning in welcome aboard And if you've been here before, it's always nice to see a familiar face. Now, you can find my show on over 420 top stations throughout the United States. We're streaming in your favorite radio app. Just search for my last name, Commando. And you can find us as a podcast, as a webcast, commercial free. Over at commando.com, just hit that button that says Commando Community. And a special hello goes out to all of our listeners in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Space Force, and the Coast Guard in 175 different countries who are joining us on the American Forces Network Radio. And I know, I just know that you have at least a few questions about something digital I can lend a hand to. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And if you're just too shy to come on the show, I get that. You can drop me your questions over on our website. That's commando.com. There's a button that says email Kim. All right, you can count on me to check out at least 35 different websites to make sure that you and I are both up to date on what's going on in the tech world. And here are the five things that you need to know right now, starting with number one. I'm going to tell you about a gentleman by the name of Philip Paxson. He was an all-around great guy from everything I read about him. He's a veteran, he's a husband, and most of all, a proud father of two young girls. Now, after a long day of celebrating his daughter's ninth birthday party in 2022, he used Google Maps to guide him back to his home in Hickory, North Carolina. And Google Maps told him to go over the Stone Creek Bridge. Now, he had recently moved from Florida. He didn't really know a lot about the area yet, but it was known to everybody else in that area that Snow Creek Bridge had collapsed in 2013 and it was never repaired. Now, Philip didn't know this, so he plugged in Google Maps, how do I get home? And he trusted Google Maps and he drove his car off the collapsed bridge and he died shortly thereafter. Now, there was no way that Philip would have known not to cross by looking. It was pitch black, 11 p.m. There's no lights in the area. On top of that, it was raining. So Google was notified several times about the danger. Wow. Never updated Google Maps. And of course, the family is suing for negligence. Isn't that just a horrible story? Uh, Moving on to number two, let's talk about Amazon. They're adding 250,000 workers for the holidays. Yeah, that's right. They say it's going to be their biggest holiday season ever. Jeez. (laughs) Can they get any bigger? Oh, great. So they're hiring 250,000 folks to handle the holiday rush. Last year, they hired 150,000. The average hourly wage for warehouse and delivery jobs is now $20.50 an hour. Uh, They also announced this past week something called Just Walk Out. That's Amazon's new retail tech. Let's just skip the line legally. RFID tags keep track of the stuff that you leave the store with, and then your uh, credit card on files automatically charged. I think that's pretty sweet. I mean, no more of that self-checkout. God, who wants to do that anyway? Uh, It's testing in Seattle right now. Uh, Number three, it's fall, and that means new product announcements. We have Apple, we have Amazon's new announcements, and now Microsoft came out. And here's some things that they are going to be pitching us. Copilot AI, 
It's going to be built right into Windows. So your Windows is going to have AI whether you want it or not. The Verge said at the co-pilot scanning a long email, it tackled a math problem just by circling on the screen with a stylus. Now, it's not new. Uh, there's also a bot that they're rolling out called Microsoft 365 Chat. They say it can scan through your entire work life. Wow. All your emails, your text messages, your files, your meeting notes, your invites, and then give you like cliff notes on everything that's going on in your life. Wow, <laughs> that's something. Uh, also, they had the Surface Pro Laptop Go 3, and they look just about the same. And I know what you're thinking. Kim, you're super excited about all these Microsoft products, but the day that Microsoft makes a product that doesn't suck is when they're going to start making the Microsoft Vacuum Cleaner. Yeah, I know. Uh, moving on to number four, I told you so. I hate to say that, but I told you so. Let's go back in time. <clears throat> Let's go back in time to NFTs. You know what that stands for? Non-fungible token, All right? Basically it refers to interchangeable goods. You could have a digital version of the Mona Lisa or something like that. And everybody was just like going crazy for these NFTs a year ago. Remember the nine cat meme, the one with the cat shaped like a pop tart that just flew in the stars? Uh, it was sold as an NFT for $830,000. Fast forward today, hardly worth anything, right? Uh, less than 1% of NFTs have a price tag over $6,000. So if you wasted money on an NFT, <clears throat> I'm sorry to tell you, you, uh, you ain't got anything. And finally, this coming in at number five. Let's talk about drones and bears and national parks. Okay, There are some things that you cannot do with drones, Okay, especially if it impacts wildlife. It's illegal to use a drone within the boundaries of a national park. And getting within 50 yards of wildlife is just against the rules. Well, a wildlife photographer taking photos in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park shared a video of one jerk breaking a lot of laws. The drone pilot chased a scared bear out of a tree. I watched the video. You can see how frightened the bear is, okay? And the bear was really high up in the tree. If the bear fell, it would have died. I'll tell you, I just, I couldn't bear to watch this video more than once. So if you are a drone pilot, don't go near the wildlife. Just don't do that. I mean, it reminds me of this joke. A bear walks into a bar and says, give me a whiskey and a cola. And the uh, bartender says, why the big paws? And the bear says, I'm not sure. I was born with them. <laughs> Get it? All right, sorry. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, SelectQuote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote. We shop. You save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. All right, folks, I want you to meet Michaela. Okay, she's not just a film fanatic and a single mom in Kentucky, but she's also being pretty brave because she's going to share that she fell for a celebrity romance scam online. And it starts like this. Michaela just loves photography and filmmaking, so she headed over to an online forum where she just wanted to meet folks like her and wanted to work on creative projects. But things took this wild turn when she got a message from someone claiming to be Dacre Montgomery. Okay. Who is that? Well, you may know him as the actor behind Billy from Stranger Things. Yeah, that wildly popular show. And he just happens to be Michaela's favorite actor. So we all have our favorite stars, but just imagine one just sliding into your DMs. So, Michaela, thanks so much for being here. And as I mentioned, you're pretty brave because a lot of folks would be like, oh, I don't want to tell my story. But take us back to those first messages. I mean, what were they like? And how did this person earn your trust? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. Um, second of all, uh, it's not like he was just Johnny Depp trying to slide into my DMs. But the first messages were very unsuspecting. Uh, as you said, I was on a forum. I was trying to look for hobby projects, you know, something to kind of get some experience under my belt. 
um, because I am going to school for, you know, film and TV work. And um, there was a forum and I was trying to, you know, connect with like minded people. And I had a few people that had messaged me and I was talking to them. And then this one account messaged me and we started talking and we started to become friends. And it was just mainly messages like how you would get to know someone like, oh, well, what got you into film? You know, what got you into TV? What got you into watching stuff? Stuff that you would do to try to get, you know, to know someone. Mm -hmm. And then as we got deeper into the connection, the relationship, he was like, well, can I confess something to you? And I was like, well, yeah, I guess. And that's when he just, you know, dropped a bombshell on me saying, oh, well, I'm Dacre Montgomery. Oh, okay. Now, you've only been chatting up to this point, right? Yes. Okay. And then was there anything in any of these chats where you were like, I'm not sure if this is Dacre Montgomery or then like, no, this is Dacre. Oh, I was absolutely suspicious from the get go. Like there were, you know, it, it was no doubt like just, oh, this cannot be him, you know. So this guy's coming along and you're just chatting it up and you're feeling pretty close to him. And then he's telling you some pretty intimate personal stories. And then when does it turn into, ooh, this might be a scam? Uh, Well, I started to get suspicious of the scam part um, when he first came up to me saying, hey, you know, I know you donate to things which I do. I like to, you know, take some extra money of mine and donate it when I can. And he said, hey, you know, if you have anything extra, he was like, I contribute to this, you know, charity. And it was like Children's Network Hospital or something like that, which I know that he has done in the past because there's been video and things like that of him in L.A. doing that project. And I thought, well, you know what? Yeah, that might that might be legit, you know. So I donated and that didn't seem, you know, too far fetched. Mm -hmm. But then he came up to me with a mining scheme, and that's for Bitcoin. Okay. And that's when I started to really say, hey, maybe this is a little weird. So did he ask you to invest in uh, a new type of cryptocurrency or some type of new app? It wasn't a new type of crypto. It was Bitcoin. Okay. Um, Basically, he said anything you, you put in, I'll match. And so he did. But then somewhere it turned into, you know, all of a sudden I was putting in 500 and 800 and, you know, and it felt like every other day, but I wasn't getting anything back. So did you have, where did you put this money into Bitcoin? Did did he tell you to download a specific app? Uh, no, it was actually mostly through uh, Bitcoin ATMs, oh, which I okay. didn't even know existed mm-hmm. until he started, you know, getting me into it. So how much in total did you put into this Bitcoin ATM? Well, the Bitcoin itself was about three thousand. Mm-hmm. And then, um, what was was Daker like? Kind of just egging you on, telling you keep doing this. Oh yeah, it was. You know, if you keep putting in, eventually it's going to pay off. But then eventually, when I you know started to ask questions, he said it was paid off because of fees and everything. But I never got anything back from it. Hmm. And of course, he told me, you know, oh well, the guy that you know was mining for you, he took the money and ran. <laughs> And I was just like, oh, that's just typical. But at the time, it's like I didn't, I guess you could say I was infatuated with him at that point. It wasn't just the money. It was getting to talk to somebody that I cared about. So so how did you get, how did you get out? How did you get yourself out of this entire mess? Basically, he went MIA for 115 days. And during that 115 days, I had a lot of time to sit and think. So, yeah. so he came back after 115 days and did he ask you for more money? He didn't ask me for more money. He didn't ask me for anything. It was almost like an addict getting out of rehab and then immediately relapsing. Oh, okay. Because when he came back after that 115 days, I was, you know, extremely upset with him. And I said, I want to know, are we still pretending? And he was like, pretending what? And I was like, who you are and what you're doing. And he was like, there's nothing to pretend. Who do you think you're talking to? And I said, I know you, you know, who you think, who you say that you, you are, who you want me to think you are, but I don't think that is who you are. And I was like, and even if it was, you would be a terrible human because I sat here for 115 days counting the days. So, Mikhail, there are a lot of people out here, out there who are listening right now, and they might be in the same path. What advice can you give them to help them? not fall for these type of characters? I would say, unless they can video chat, don't send anything. And if you've already sent something, stop sending it. 
even if they do video chat, it's one of those things. If they do love you and they do give you that sob story, and even if they're legit, Mm -hmm. if they give you a sob story and you do everything that you can to help them and they don't get out, they ain't it. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, the the scammers are of the type where they know how to psychologically manipulate people. They know what levers to push. They know what greed can make somebody do, what love will make somebody do. But there are just too many scammers out there, folks. You know, just too many. Michaela, thank you for telling your story. And and I'm very hopeful that we've just helped a lot of people who may be in the same boat. I'm telling you, folks, you have to be smart. The scammers are everywhere online. you got to use your noggin. If it just doesn't make sense, it doesn't feel good in your gut, it's just wrong. All right, let's talk about your apps. Are your apps listening to everything that you say? Well, as it turns out, there's a hidden list right in your smartphone that will tell you if they are, and also there's a way to make them stop listening. So when you install an app, do you ever read the terms and conditions? Mm, Nobody does. Well, in that legal mumbo jumbo, you could have just said, sure, you can go ahead and listen in my phone's mic and you can collect all that my data and you can sell all my data to anybody who you want. Well, if you're on an iPhone, open your settings, go to privacy and security, and then tap microphone. Okay. This pulls up a list of all the apps that are using your microphone at that very moment. Okay. What you want to do is toggle off the apps you don't want picking up any conversations. Now, for all of our team Android folks, you're gonna head into your settings menu. And inside there, you're gonna wanna find the apps permission manager. And just like I talked about with iPhone folks, you just disable the microphone for any apps that shouldn't be using it. I bet you're gonna be shocked. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. You know, I get the emails and I get the questions here all the time. Kim... I just know that I have the next American novel right inside my head. If only I could get it down somewhere inside my laptop or my computer or my tablet. Okay, well, you don't need to go ahead and sit there and type. You don't need to buy anything extra. A lot of people don't realize that inside Microsoft Word and inside Google Docs, you can actually dictate that novel. Oh, yes, it's a secret you're going to love. And then later on, before you get rid of a printer, is it actually storing all your secrets? Hmm, you may be surprised. Now, I have to tell you a little personal story that, as many of you may have heard me talk about here on the show, is that I have been moving into my brand new house that uh, has taken six long years to build. Okay. I would never do it again. And joining us here on the show is our amazing content queen, Allie Seligman. And let me tell you something, Allie. When you have to move in a house and you've had stuff, I'm talking about like stuff in pods for years that you haven't seen, (laughs) okay? You're like, why did I save that? I haven't missed it. Or what's really great, see this black blouse and these pants? (laughs) Brand new to you. (laughs) I know, I haven't seen them. I'm like, wow. And what's really great is that everything still fits, which is like a whole nother thing, which is nice when you don't do that. Love that. But but what's interesting is that... um, I've been finding a lot of stuff of Ian's over the year. Oh. And so it's actually very heartwarming. And so I found like his Mother's Day booklet that he did in kindergarten. Oh, how cute. And and what's also, and I actually FaceTime him. I said, I want you to notice something. So he's like, so I'm going through page by page. And I noticed, I said, both of us have big smiles on our faces. Mm-hmm. And like we're holding hands. And like I have like, <laughs> oh. I have like three fingers, you know. <laughs> It's just like AI. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, but he's like, you know, I love you because you're my mother and you make me dinner and you tuck me in at bed <laughs> oh. and, and we say our prayers and we go to, I mean, every day it's something new. Okay. But there was one page in particular in his, I think it was, there was first or second grade Mother's Day book. Okay. So you get through all the nice things about mom. Uh oh. And then he says, um, I know my, something like, I know my mother 
means good things, but I wish that she would stop telling me to play Xbox. <laughs> okay. And it had a picture of me. Now, now we're like, we're getting older. Yeah. Okay. Picture of me standing there, like pointing my finger at him with this, <laughs> with this bubble above my head that says, stop, Ian, stop, no more Xbox for you. And that's when everyone in Ian's class learned what a mean mom you are. <laughs> I was such a mean mom. So mean. It was awful. So, so we have clutter in our lives. Yes. Okay? And now, but we also have digital clutter and you're going to help us get rid of that. I sure am. You know, let's try to put moving aside. Think about like your normal life when you're not in the middle of moving. Do you think your digital space or your physical space is more cluttered? In general. Uh, in general, for me, before I did my move, it, it depends upon the person. Okay. Oh, for sure. Okay. But you, I'm asking you. For me, uh, probably my my digital space is more cluttered. And I mean, you know, when, just when you were thinking about that, I was thinking of my sister, Christine, she's wonderful. She is. Okay. <laughs> but. Okay. She is. She's wonderful. I mean, the woman says the rosary every morning, every night. I mean, honest to God. And she helps kids with learning disabilities and she changes their lives <laughs> and all this other stuff. Get to the bad part. Okay. She comes over and she's like, can you help me? And she brings over her MacBook. Okay. The woman ha must have 3,000 files on her desktop. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't see the background. No, you can't. I'm like, is there a background here? Yeah. No. So, yeah. yeah. So it depends on the person. Well, and there are different levels of clutter, right? That we can take both in our homes, in our lives, and then on our stuff. Yeah. I can't take 3,000 things on my desktop. Christine can. Good for her. <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> There was a study, Secure Data Recovery did this, about 2,000 people, and one-third said that their digital space is messier than their house, which I guess makes sense, right? We, yeah. we have to do the dishes or things are going to get gross. We have to do our laundry. You can squirrel away a lot of stuff on your computer and never deal with it. So if you are feeling that overwhelmed feeling of like, oh man, there are so many files, so many programs I need to update, my desktop is cluttered. My recycle bin's full. I've got seven different windows full of tabs open. I don't even know what to do here, Ellie. Okay. Um, a first order business, close your browser, friend. You don't <laughs> need all those tabs. I bet that you won't miss them. It's like Kim in the pod, right? Yes. You're never going to miss them. I know. And it's, you know, you kind of sit there and you're like, do I keep it? Do I keep it? Oh, no, Kim. If, if it was in the pod that long <laughs> and you weren't pumped to see it, get rid of it. Yeah. No, you know what? I didn't ask you. What does your desktop look like? Well, I have a little trick that I will give in a minute that generally my desktop is good. I, I cycle through. I get to a point where it's too much. I'm like the person that never cleans out her closet. And then when I do, I have to explode the whole room to clean oh, the I closet. Okay. But then it's perfect. Oh, because you're just like, life. you know, you're just, we're just going to say the amazing content. We just call you like... <laughs> Like perfect alley. Oh, shush. just perfect. <laughs> no, we're not going to call me that. And, okay, I cook, I clean, mm. I take care of my husband, I Delightful. garden. Yes, <laughs> I don't garden. Um, okay, what should you get rid of? How should you think about this stuff? Kind of the no-brainer things, right? I know you can think of them. Screenshots, memes, pictures that you saved from a website randomly and realized like, why do I have this picture of a dolphin on my desktop? I'm not sure. Get rid of all that stuff because... You don't actually want it, right? If it's sitting on your desktop, if you haven't taken the time to put it in a home, you probably don't care about it. That's uh, true. If it has a name, like unnamed or screenshot, <laughs> I bet that's even more true. So look for that stuff. Just get rid of it. You'll feel a little lighter. And then you have to think about the stuff that actually matters. Now, I, here's another question I want you to think about, Kim, for yourself or, uh, you know, you listening. If I got on your computer, wasn't protected by a password, is there something on the desktop you wouldn't want me to see? Yes. Okay. Is that a great thing? No. Probably not. <laughs> because think about it. I put myself in the worst case scenario, right? What if someone stole your laptop, they managed to get into it? Okay. Anything there, they got it. They can open it. So you don't want things just sitting around on the open that are private, Legal documents, financial records, you know, any kind of financial info, tax documents, anything that has what's called personally identifiable information. So things like your social security number, um, other identifiers to the government, your address, your birthday, you know, private details, uh, anything with your health patient information, medical records, medical documents. And then if you have a business or maybe side hustle or maybe you just like to, I don't know, trademark or invent stuff 
things that are like copyrighted, intellectual property, trade secrets. Um, we're not even going to get into HR stuff, legal stuff for work. Just Don't so have much. that on your personal <laughs> computer is my advice there. Yes, that should be you know safely locked away. But all this stuff, if you have it, don't just leave it sitting there. Because imagine that worst case. Imagine that I, I don't have bad intentions, but I'm going to walk in and log into your computer. You don't want me to see, I don't know, probably a lot of stuff on your desktop. So, well, you know, but, but, you know, but there are also these situations okay, that, like, for example, like we have John, our IT genius. Yep. Okay. John knows all of my passwords. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. But I will tell you, I got embarrassed recently. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Because, and I, after, you know, he was working on my computer. And then I thought, oh, that probably was like not, you know, I mean, probably you shouldn't see your boss. Okay. So what I did is I took a selfie and I was in a bikini. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it's like, I kind of, and I'm, after he got up, I'm like, hmm, that probably should not have been on the desktop. And know? that's the PG version, right? Some people have um, R-rated version of that story and anybody could come find that on your computer yeah so yeah that that's another thing right you often have someone else using your (laughs) machine sorry john sorry john sorry john sorry Sorry. john so one way i like to think about where to put this stuff is i got this analogy this is from popsi and i got a proud of them because it's so good you have your pocket your closet and your basement the digital versions so your pocket that's the stuff that you want right there you need to access it all the time put that in the cloud your insurance documents, things that you might just need to pull up on any of your devices at any time. Your closet is the stuff you don't need it all the time, so you don't have to have it right there. Sure, store that on your computer, on your hard drive. And the basement is for the stuff that you just don't need cluttering up your everyday digital life, like your wedding pictures or, you know, just stuff that you keep around, your tax documents from 10 years ago. You don't need to access those easily, right? So those can go on something like an external drive. All this stuff, yeah, it should probably be on cloud storage, but that's a good way to think about it. So I like that. that. What was that? What did, what did they come up with? What's that called? What did they do? Pocket, closet, and basement. I like that. That's a good idea. Yeah, I like that too. It is, and you know, it's, and you know, and, and so it's a big task, <laughs> okay. To, and, but it's also you know some things that you can think of as you're moving forward. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, I remember my boss back at IBM once pointed to my desk and it was a complete mess. Okay. <laughs> you? <laughs> I know. And he said, you know, I remember. He said, you know, a cl- his name was Dick, by the way. Uh, he said that a cluttered desk is a sign of a cluttered mind. And then I looked at him and I said, well, Dick, your desk is empty. <laughs> Didn't go over very well. Allie, thanks for being here. Thanks for, like, uh, helping us declutter our lives. And again, that's Allie Selgman. She's our amazing content queen. And give her a round of applause. All right, here's the deal. You don't need to have anything extra to start using your voice to start writing the next great American novel. If you're using Microsoft 365, just go to Home and Dictate. And then if you're using Google Docs, kind of the same thing under Tools, it's voice typing. We have all the steps on how to use it over at commando.com. Just use the search box and type in, I don't know, Dictation. Uh, Diane in Springfield, Massachusetts. Hi there. This is an honor to talk to you, Kim, and thank you for advocating for those of us who struggle with technology. Oh, you betcha. So so we live in a very remote uh, portion of the state, uh, and we are one of the lucky towns that have just uh, started to have fiber. Many of the surrounding communities do not have high-speed Internet yet. Now, my husband and I run a very... Uh, rural animal rescue and foster sanctuary, and we currently have a small, um, well, she's not small, she's young, two-year-old Great Dane who is jumping our uh, four-foot-high fence and being, and being naughty and running off into our woods, which abut a state forest. So when she takes off, she's gone for a few hours, and we can't access where she is. So if I put an ear tag on her with no one you know, surrounding us, having high-speed internet, would we be able to track her? Uh, it's it probably not if you're in a super rural area. Uh, because okay. see, the, the air tags, they not only work off of, they don't really work off of cellular, they, as much as they work off of Bluetooth. And so 
the the signal from the AirTag bounces from various Apple devices around it in order to pinpoint a precise location. And okay. so, for example, if I have no cell phone coverage, but I have, um, uh, you know, I have a Wi-Fi network and I've got an iPhone and I've got an AirTag, then we're going to be able to track down the dog. So it, that being the case, and is it a big town or is it a, you said it's a small no. town? A thousand people. Oh, you know, I, I wouldn't bank on an air tag. I wouldn't trust an air tag. Um, if you're going to be looking for any type of device in order to track this dog, that's when you're probably going to be looking at a GPS type collar. And when you start looking oh, okay. at uh, GPS based collars, is that you've got pretty much two names in the industry that come up. One is called Phi, that's F-I, uh, and the other one's called Halo. And these have, uh, I actually have the, the Phi on my Golden Retriever Abbey, as well as an AirTag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just in case. Um, and with the Phi collar is that you can pinpoint her on a map, you can set up geofences, uh, they also have a little bit of a social media profile if you want for your dog and other dogs can follow your dog and, <laughs> you know, uh, it's waterproof so she can jump in the pool with it. Uh, but the, the big distinction between the two is that with five, the battery life is three months and with the halo collar, it's 24 hours. So who wants to charge this darn thing every 24 hours, right? Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. But because it's GPS based, it can be used in your community. Uh, okay. So that's where I'd be looking at something like a Phi collar. Now, you know, of course, if I say GPS and it's a collar and how much it's going to cost, I mean, uh, you know, you can buy three months for $54 and it's uh, it's subscription based. And then, of course, you got to buy the collar itself. That's about 110 bucks. And so okay. that would probably be, you know, if I'm trying to, if I'm really trying to track a dog in a rural area and I want to make sure that it doesn't go over the fence because you can set up a geofence. You know what a geofence mm-hmm. is? You know what that is, right? No. <laughs> okay. okay. A geofence is a virtual fence. So on a map, you would draw a box. And okay. so it, when the dog goes out of this box on the land, you know, like a virtual, like, you know, on your property, you draw a box. Okay. And then if the dog goes outside that box, you're going to get an automatic text message alert, email, however you set it up. I see. So you would know exactly the moment and you know exactly where she's located. You know, it's, and, and you know, and dogs, you know, you, like you said, you have a great rescue uh, operation going there. And, you know, dogs are our family. They are. I mean, I love my Abby dog. She's just so funny. If you want to see a great video of Abby, uh, head over to Instagram.com slash Kim Commando. And you can see, you know, from time to time, I'll look outside at, and I'm, I can't find her. And then I look in the spa and she's like dancing in the spa. This dog is dancing in the spa. It's so crazy. So is. so anyway, again, you want to check out the Phi Collar, Diane, and thank you for your call. You know, when you start looking at the Phi Collar and other things, you might start seeing something new, a new acronym. It's L-T-E-M. You're like, what the heck is this? L-T-M-M. This is a Brand new kind of almost cellular network that's reserved for Internet of Things devices. Again, so it's LTE, then the dash M. And again, that's for all this stuff that's Internet connected. All right, let's just face it. We print a lot of confidential information, sensitive information. Now, these popular printing products and services, they don't promise to keep private what you're printing. Like, for example, take Canon. Their privacy policy says that they can collect all sorts of stuff from you. I'm talking about files, images, descriptions, even metadata. What if you use FedEx? Oh my gosh. Okay. Its policy mentions collecting user uploaded information. Okay. What is that? That's everything that you print. Now, what if you're heading over to Staples? They can keep and store personal data, including what they say, copy and print materials. I know what you're thinking. The tracking just never, ever stops. That's why you need to do a complete factory reset, by the way, uh, anytime you sell or get rid of a printer. And we got those steps over on the website, too. Hey, thanks for joining me. Make sure that you give me a great solid and tell three friends about the Kim Commando Show, because after all, knowledge is power. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited. 
One in four car batteries is weak and needs to be replaced. Let our professional parts people test your battery for free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts.